14. May Sigmar speed you. Reiner's mind raced, trying to think of some way to overcome the great swords. It was impossible. They were proven veterans. They had seen everything. They were ready for any trick, and they were armed to the teeth. What could he possibly do to throw them off their stride, to shock them? The door was swinging open. He could see the four hammer-bearers standing beyond it, swords out. The leader held a lantern at his side. They had the look of witch-finders on the hunt, seeing sin in everything. His heart banged against his chest. He had it. Franca! He grabbed the girl's wrist and dragged her before the door, just as the four great swords stepped in, raising their swords. Your time has come, villains, said the leader. Reiner pulled Franca into his arms, crying, Kiss me, beloved, then put action to his words and mashed his lips against hers with all the passion he could muster. The great swords, paralyzed with shock, gaped. The tip of the leader's sword hit the stone floor with a clang. What abomination is this? Inverted degenerates. As quick as an eel, Jurgen darted forward and kicked the lantern from the leader's hand, then ripped his sword from his slack fingers as the cell was plunged into darkness. Rush em! Reiner shouted. He dived at the second man's knees as Franca headbutted him in the chest. The fellow hit the floor. Around him, Reiner could hear, but not see, swords clanging as the others charged forward, screaming battle cries. Fists smashed into skin. Men grunted and yelped. There was a sharp gasp and the unmistakable sound of steel chunking into flesh. Reiner flailed for his greatsword's sword arm, trying to catch it before the man could swing. He caught a sword instead, and razored open the base of his thumb. Reiner wrapped the blade in his arms and hugged it as the man tried to pull it away. Sit on him! I am! came Franca's voice. Reiner fought the man's hands and need for his groin as shouts and thumbs and clanks came from all over the cell. There was a sickening crack nearby. His man convulsed. A second crack, and all the strength went out of the fellow's limbs. Another, and he let go of his sword. Franca, enough! Oh! Reiner grabbed the hammer's sword and stood, but the sounds of the other conflicts were trailing off, except for one last thrashing fight in the center. Is me you have, came Gianno's voice. Get he! Reiner groped around in the darkness and found the lantern. He righted it and fumbled in his belt pouch for flint and steel. But the flame had not gone out, only guttered, and now came to life again. Reiner looked around. Gianno was fighting a disarmed greatsword, and Dag was fighting Gianno, trying to punch him in the kidney. Around them, the other black hearts were rising to their feet. Their opponents remained motionless. Dag! Reiner called. Leave off! Get the greatsword! I want to... Dag sprang up as he saw the greatsword was still alive. As the others stepped forward to help, he jumped on the man's chest, snatched his dagger from its scabbard, and plunged it into his eye up to the hilt. He laughed like a child with a pinwheel as the man spasmed and jerked, then lay still. Got him, Captain, he said, looking up. What do you want? Reiner balled his fists. He had never in his life come across a fellow who was in more need of killing. He forced himself to speak slowly. I wanted to speak to him, to find out if Shader had put his plan into action yet. Dag looked at him blankly. Oh, well, too late for that, eh? He giggled. Aye, said Reiner. Too late. The rest of the great swords were dead as well. Gert had crushed the windpipe of one with his thumbs, while Pavel and Hals held his arms and legs. Jurgen had accounted for another, with the help of Karel, who had held a man by the ankles. The life poured out of his neck in a red flood. 
Franca sat up on the chest of the last. The back of his head was a crimson crater, and hair and brains slicked one of the iron rings that stood up out of the floor. Franca held clumps of the man's beard and hair in her clenched fists. She shivered with revulsion when she saw what she had done, and flung the tufts away. "'Well done, lads,' said Reiner, wrapping his cut thumb with his handkerchief. "'Romner, check the guard room. Jurgen stepped to the door and looked out. He gave the all's well sign. Gert laughed as he stood up. "'What in Sigmar's name inspired you to kiss the lass?' Reiner shot a chagrined look at Franca. It worked, didn't it? Almost didn't, said Hals, scowling. You surprised me as much as you surprised them. Aye, said Pavel. I nearly pissed myself. He blushed and looked at Franca. Begging your pardon, lass. Stop that, Franca barked. The others laughed. Reiner took the sword belt, keys and gloves from his man, and gave Franca his dagger. The others looted the rest, sharing out swords and daggers as best they could. So, said Gert, what's your plan, Captain? Reiner smirked. Captain again, is it? Well, I... He hesitated. He knew what he wanted to do. He wanted to get Gutzman's gold out of the mine and scurry off back to civilization before the ratmen poured out of their hole. But he couldn't do that until he knew Gutsman was dead. The fact that Shader's greatswords had come to kill them suggested he was, but Reiner couldn't be sure. He sighed. Well, I suppose we should go up and see what's in the wind first. He glared at Dag. Since we've got no one to ask... He stepped out of the cell, with the others behind him. A stairway ascended into darkness on the far side of the square guard room. They took it, swords at the ready. As they turned up the last flight, they saw at the top a guard with his back to them, standing on the far side of a locked gate. Reiner motioned them back around the corner. Any of you recognize that fellow, or recall his name? Gert frowned. I need another look. He crept up to the landing, peeked around, then came back down. Herlaken, I think, he said. Or Herlaker, some such. He stands by mine. We did wall duty together the other day. Reiner shrugged. It will have to do. Now back down a bit, then come up marching. He looked at Jurgen. When he opens the door, you run up and pull him in, you understand? Jurgen nodded. The Blackhearts backed down another flight, then Reiner dropped his hand and they began marching up, kicking the stairs with their boot heels. Just before they reached the last flight again, Reiner called out, gruff and loud. Her Leshener, open the gate! The guard's voice echoed down to them. Yes, sir, right away, sir. Reiner listened to the jingle and clank of the guard, putting key to lock. He held up his hand, and the black hearts marched in place. It wouldn't do to come around the corner before the fellow had opened the door. At last, he heard a scrape of the key and the squeal of the door swinging open. Now, Jurgen! Jurgen darted around the corner as Reiner and the rest resumed marching. They mounted the last flight just in time to see him springing up at a surprised guard. Jurgen punched him in the nose as he tried to draw, then caught him around the back of the neck and flung him down the stairs, where Reiner and Giano caught him and clamped hands over his mouth. Reiner held his breath as the swordmaster took the keys from the lock, pulled the gate closed, and slipped back down the stairs. He expected shouts and challenges, but none came. He exhaled. Right, he whispered. Tie him up and leave him downstairs. Better to kill him, eh? said Dag. We ain't at war with the army, lad, growled Reiner. As Hals and Pavel tied the guard's wrists and ankles with the laces of his jerkin, Reiner craned his neck to look through the gate. 
The soldiers who wandered through the hallway beyond it seemed calm, which told Reiner that the Ratman had not yet attacked, and that Gutzman had not been reported dead or missing. Daylight streamed into the hall from the courtyard door. It looked to be late afternoon. He waited for the hall to empty, but it never did. The armory was the first door on the right. The barracks where Gutzman's retinue of knights slept the second. On the left were the tall doors that led to the main hall, usually locked, and beyond them the door to the courtyard. The hall was in constant use. We'll have to brass it out, lads, Reiner said. With luck, our fall from grace isn't common knowledge. We'll just stroll out like knots the matter. You forgetting you and Ostini and the lass smell like a latrine, Captain, said Gert. And you look like a felon one, added Pavel. Reiner sighed. Curse it, I had. Well, I'll think of something. He hoped he wasn't lying. If anyone challenges us, let me do the talking. If they call the guard, run for the north gate. He took a deep breath. Right, off we go. Reiner mounted the steps and pushed open the gate with the others behind him. He tried to keep his breath steady, but every soldier who stepped into the hall made him jump. They all wrinkled their noses as the black hearts passed. At last the knight stopped, scowling. Sigmar Zoxter, what happened to you, corporal? Reiner saluted. Sorry for the smell, sir. Floor of the guardroom latrine caved in. Some of us got banged up a bit. Going to clean off now. The captain made a face. Well, be quick about it. Reiner saluted again, and they continued to the courtyard door. Reiner looked out, then pulled back, heart thudding. Shader was on the steps before the keep's main door, talking with Obercaptain Neumark. Shader, said Reiner over his shoulder. Curse the luck. We'll have to wait a moment. Before he could finish, there was a commotion at the gate, and the lance corporal galloped into the courtyard on a ladered horse. General Gutzman, he called, reining up. I have urgent news for General Gutzman. Shader stepped to the lancer as he dismounted. General Gutzman is away at the mines, corporal, he said. Tell me your news. Everyone in the courtyard turned to listen as the lancer saluted. Yes, commander. My lads and I were patrolling in the southern pass, bandit hunting, when we saw a column coming from Auschwitz. A column? asked Shader, frowning. What do you mean, man? Commander, it was Baron Kaspar at the head of an army. We crept forward to observe and counted six company of horse, eight hundred pike and musket, and siege engines. Siege engines? Shader sounded shocked. What is he about? Does he mean to take the fort? My lord, said the corporal, I believe that is exactly what he means to do. There was uproar in the courtyard as everyone within earshot began talking at once. Lancers began pushing past Reiner and the Blackhearts into the courtyard. It was a perfect opportunity. No one, not even the guards at the gate, would look at them now. Around the edge, lads, Reiner murmured, and keep your heads down. They shuffled out in the midst of a crowd of lancers. Shader had mounted the steps and was issuing orders to the assembled troops. Daggert, ride to the mine and ask General Gutzman to return at once. I will take command until he can be found. He turned to Neumark. Oberkaptain, assemble a force of three hundred pike and accompany each of pistoliers, knights, lancers, swords and handguns. Then march south to Lesnar's Narrows and hold it for as long as you are able so that we may have some time to prepare. In the meantime, all other captains are to have their troops make the fort ready to receive the attack. And someone find over Captain Oppenhauer and ask him to see me in my offices at his earliest convenience. Now go, all of you, and may Sigmar speed you. The courtyard erupted into confusion as men ran hither and thither while officers shouted questions 
and bellowed for horses. Above it all, infantry over Captain Neumark called out his orders in a clear, calm voice. I will have Knight Captain Vank, Lance Captain Halmer, and Pistolier Captain Krugholt report to me, as well as Pike Captain... The rest was lost, as Reiner and the Blackhearts dove into a stream of men rushing out of the gate. No one stopped them as they passed into the fort. In fact, they gave them a wide berth. Auschweg attacks now? cried Carell as they hurried along. What rotten luck! Don't be a fool, said Reiner. Couldn't you see? That little scene was more staged than a murder play. Staged? queried Carell. What do you mean? It's a trick, said Franca, answering before Reiner could reply. There is no attack from Auschweg. She either only pretends there is to draw the force attention south while the ratmen attack from the north. And he sends away half the fort to make it even easier for them, said Gert. By the time Neumark's forces return from their wild goose chase, they'll be locked out and at the mercy of our cannon in the hands of the rats. Reiner motioned to the others, and they pushed out of the flow of men into a narrow alley between two cavalry barracks. But, but it can't be, said Carell, catching his breath. The man who gave the warning was a lancer. The lancers are loyal to Gutsman. I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, lad, said Reiner, but even a cavalryman can be bought. He sighed and leaned against the wall. Lads, I've a feeling there's nothing left for us here. If Shader makes his move, then Goodsman must be dead. I think our best play is to head home and report a commander's treachery to Manfred. And leave the fort to the mercy of the ratman? Asked Carell, aghast. What would you have us do, lad? Asked Reiner. We nine can't stop an army of monsters, and we've tried warning the brass already, twice. He looked around at the others. I am, of course, open to suggestions. The Blackhearts looked unhappy, but said nothing. Right then, Reiner pushed away from the wall. We go. I want to return to the mine to be sure that Gutsman is dead first. Then we head north. The others nodded, glum. Franka shot Reiner a sharp look.